Internet, Eric here. Rachel's over there. Hello. We are back to finally do another episode or video of Please Don't Make Me Watch. Mm -hmm. And if you're new to that or don't know what the concept is, basically I choose a, a movie that I know Rachel will hate. Make her watch it without any phones or any type of electronics. And then we do a review. And then afterwards she does her best to get revenge. And then so on and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, if you watched our last one we did, the last one we did, I chose and made her watch Pro Wrestlers vs. Zombies, mm -hmm. and she fucking hated it. So, Rachel, in her infinite wisdom, knows what I really, really hate. Mm -hmm. Pretty much old-timey Disney movies. Live and action. Live action Disney movies and musicals. So, she picked <laughs> Mary Poppins. <laughs> Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome, plot spoilers, blah, blah, blah. This came out in like 65. I don't know when. The The date will be in the, the description. So basically, I have to try to say what I remember, what happens in the movies, and then Rachel can correct me, and then we'll go from there. So what I remember is, like, everyone fucking knows Mary Poppins. Some British nanny who lives you in the... You know it. Well, I know of the story. Okay. I've never seen it. I've seen just okay. clips of it. But some British nanny... Who does magic or some shit like that. She's living in the clouds. Like she's literally like sitting on a cloud doing her makeup when the movie starts. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of Hellion children that, you know, they can't keep a nanny for some reason. I don't know why. And there's an ad put in the paper. Because, well basically because the dad's too busy working at the bank. And the mom's too busy being like a woman's rights activist hippie. So they put an ad in the paper. And all the nannies show up. But suddenly there's a big gust of wind and it blows them all away. And here comes Mary Poppins with her magic umbrella and she goes in there and does magic tricks and teaches the kids to have fun. And then she ends up meeting some street peddler or homeless <laughs> person or something played by Dick Van Dyke. And he knows Mary Poppins from past interactions. I don't fucking know. And then basically it's the rest of the movie is like two and a half hours of them singing and dancing when cartoons and weird old people that laugh and float in the air and chimney sweeps and asshole bankers and, and there's more to it but and then in the end you know dad realizes he was an asshole and then hey i'm gonna go take my kids to fly a kite while mary poppins flies away how is that pretty good all right what's not pretty good is this movie what okay don't like this movie because it's first it's too goddamn long it's almost like two and a half hours. Now here, now there's not, I didn't hate this movie, but I didn't like it. We'll talk about, what's her name? Julie Andrews as, as Sherry Bobbins. Mary Poppins. Yeah, Sherry Bobbins from the, from the Simpsons. Um, she, I didn't like her in this movie. No? She was so snooty at times. Like, I know she's supposed to be prim and proper in this, but she, to me, other than this, other than the time when, like, she's dancing around with, like, the chimney sweep guys, and mm -hmm. that's towards the end of the movie, she just seems so snooty and stuck up, and she wants these children to have fun. And I understand, like, she, she's also got to teach them, you know, clean your room and all mm -hmm. that stuff, but she, to me, she looks like she needs to chill out. And she's not having any fun. Even Dick Van Dyke can't really get her to loosen up. When he's dancing with the penguins and stuff like that, she seems like she's having fun. And then she goes back to her usual mm. stuck-up, snobby way. Like, every time she has to say, spit, spot, you take a shot, you'll be drunk within 30 minutes. <laughs> um, Dick Van Dyke, he's okay in this. He He's likable for the most part when he's being, like, the the, the usual, like, dork. Mm -hmm. like he His acting is really good. His physical acting, or his physical chemistry or whatever you would say is really good i like the way he's a really good dancer spinning around being stupid mm -hmm. um i like the part when he is when you first really see him in the park and he's got all the instruments hooked up to him yeah he looked like he was having a spasm when he was doing that <laughs> but he's likable he's a lovable dork mm -hmm. the other characters you got the two kids who are just two kids they're they're not special you got the asshole dad who is so unlikable in this movie. Like, by the time he redeems himself at the end and, you know, takes the kids to go fly a kite, I don't care. 
because he's just such a pompous ass. The mom is even worse <laughs> because she puts even less effort in to get to know her kids, I think. I don't know. I don't know about that. I think it's somewhat equal. Well, the dad is at least busy working. The mom doesn't have a job. She's just busy protesting all this and that. She's sticking the kids with with the, the maids and stuff. So I like her even less. However, I will say this. I like the maids. Yeah. The maids are a lot of fun. The housekeepers. They're always being goofy and stupid and uh, trying to keep the house clean and this and that while all the, the ruckus is happening. They're a lot of fun. Um, you should talk about the, the captain. Who's the captain? The sea captain. Oh, the weird drunk guy who like instead. He's like senile or I don't something. Get it. Instead of like, you know how lots of times like, it, you know, when the when every hour on the hour a clock booms, you know, in like these major cities, you got this weirdo who he dresses like a sea captain and he must be drunk or just crazy. He's a retired sea captain. Okay, whatever. He shoot he shoots, he literally shoots a cannon mm-hmm. every hour on the hour and everybody in town's okay with it because they're, they're, they, they're used to the, the earthquakes or whatever it causes, you know, the vibrations. Knocking everything down on in the house and this and that. It it just makes no sense. Um, I will say this, though. I do like the animation. Let's see if they, you can really see it very well. When Dick Van Dyke and everyone, they're, they're in the the animation. They're, yeah, there's like a chalk drawing that, that he's doing. And uh, they jump inside and they're dancing with penguins and stuff like that. That looks really neat. For 1960, whatever this came out. I don't know when this is. It's really neat. It's really good animation, um, considering how old the movie is. Um, so that's decent. Um, I really like... Okay, let's get to the music. I don't like any of the songs, except for... Chimney. Or no. The, uh, the one where they're the, the one where all the chimney sweeps are dancing mm-hmm. around. That's a lot of fun, because the choreography is really good. Um, oh, God, I couldn't tell you how Chim- many... Chimney, right? Is it Chim Chimney Cherry? Yeah, okay. I think so. That's a fine song, but what you the reason you should watch it is just because of all the, the the choreography between Dick Van Dyke and all the other um dancing chimney sweeps. That's amazing. The the speed they do it, uh, just dancing together, that's really cool. It's a lot of fun, even especially when they go down the chimney mm-hmm. and they cause uh so much chaos in the house, and that's when the housemaids are, you know, the housekeepers and all them, they get involved in it, and that's a lot of fun. They don't purposely get involved in it. They scream because all of a sudden the chimney sweeps are coming down into their chimney, mm-hmm. and the chimney sweeps basically are mocking them in the song. Ah, they're back in it, or whatever it is. Yeah, it's, it's a, that is a lot of fun. Um, it's the master. I guess... Step in time. Step in time, okay. Is that, I know that they that's say that a lot. That's they do, yeah. I'm trying to think. The other songs, like um, Spoonful of Sugar, that's okay. It's a decent sequence of her trying to basically teach the kids to clean your fucking room. Um, I don't like any of the other songs. No? No. I don't like... I, they're pretty I forgetful. Like, I like Feed the Birds. Whoa, with the homeless lady? I like that one. I don't get it. It's, a, it's about um, a homeless lady who just feeds the birds and she's trying to... To sell bird seeds so people can feed them. Yeah, she's just selling bird seeds so that people can feed the birds. It's just more stuff that that doesn't need to be in this two and a half hour movie. But mm-hmm. I guess some good could come out of it. Rachel, Rachel didn't like that. I didn't like what was the other songs when they were on the, when they were singing on the the merry go round or whatever, and then there was a horse race. Didn't like that. And one of the worst scenes in this movie. You didn't mm-hmm. like Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Not really. No. Because that one, that one got my anxiety going. Because mm. everyone's going crazy. I don't know what's going on. It's definitely, oh man, it's so insane. I can't keep up with this movie. Because so much happens, all you know, and there, there really isn't a lot of time to catch your breath. But the worst scene in this, and you know why, is when they meet the weirdo guy from Bedknot, not Bedknot, from Bruce Six, uh, Babes in Toyland. Mm-hmm. He was the... Not the professor. What was he? He was the main inventor. Mm-hmm. He's, the, he's the voice of um, Matt Hatter in Alice in Wonderland. For some reason, again, it's a scene that didn't need to be in the movie, but it was just there to be in the movie. 
They meet this weirdo looking dude. He looks like Ben Franklin. And he, he does. He looks like Ben Franklin. And for some reason, I don't know who he is. And every time he laughs, he floats up in the air. Mm-hmm. And it's just him and Dick Van Dyke floating up in the air, telling bad jokes. Mary Poppins flies up there. Look, see, Rachel's dropping stuff on the, on the ground. Mm-hmm. That's how bad the scene is. It's just boring. I, I always liked it because I always liked Dick um, Van Dyke's impressions of everybody's laughing. And uh, Mary Poppins' impressions of everybody laughing. I don't remember any impressions. I just remember that weirdo guy from Babes in Toyland laughing. Then they go to the ground and he's crying and they tell lame jokes. And it's stupid. Um, I don't like Let's Go Fly a Kite. I don't, I don't like any of the songs. Gosh. Other than that one with the the chimney sweep guys. Yeah. Um, again, I don't like the kids. Is there anything else to talk about this movie? I think it's a good story. I mean, it, it, I've always enjoyed it. Yeah. You, why don't kid. you say what you enjoy about it? Since I've been I pretty much saying what I like the music. I like the dancing. I liked. I grew up on Disney movies growing up and. Mm-hmm. It was one that I always thought was just a fun movie with all the singing and the dancing and the fact that they went into a chalk drawing. And, well, like I said, and that was neat. Now that I'm older, I appreciate the story more because the dad was, you know, he was busy at work all the time, mm-hmm. not really spending any time with the family. It was just really grumpy all the time. Yeah. And, and then I like that he finally, like, realizes that life is short and you got to... You know, have fun with your family and make memories and things like that. Okay. It's got a good moral because, yeah, because there's lots of times when uh, he works at the bank and he's got to deal with the old men at the bank mm-hmm. and he's like basically realizes that he's going to become one of them type of thing. And um, what happens? So his son wants to go buy a bag of bird seed instead of mm-hmm. like putting the money in the bank and it causes a ruckus and then that's what causes the dad to get fired. Mm-hmm. And, um, he tells the old man who runs the bank a joke, who is Dick Van Dyke under some really good makeup as mm-hmm. the old man. And I guess the old man floats up in the air and laughs, and then he has a heart attack off screen, and mm-hmm. then he gives him his job back or whatever. Um, was this movie painful? No. No. It wasn't painful. I just didn't like it because I didn't like any of the, any of the songs other than the Chimney Sweep song. And that's like one of the last songs mm-hmm. in the movie. So I'm already two hours down of not liking this movie. And then they throw this really good song at me. So that's cool. So I don't hate this film. Um, Julie Andrews, she's pretty. But like I said, she's just so snooty. Like, I don't find her very likable in this movie mm-hmm. at all. She just seems too stuck up. Um, Dick Van Dyke is really good. I'll give it. I give him credit. The kids are the kids. The parents suck. Hate the parents. Hate the floating Mad Hatter, Ben Franklin guy. Um, Special effects for the time are actually really, really good. Um, Especially blending cartoon and live action. Do I recommend Mary Poppins? Sure. I understand why people would like it. My mom loves it. Rachel loves it. Our daughter watched it and really liked it. I'm just going to be the old grump and say, no, I didn't like it. But then again, this isn't my thing. Um, so I say... Would you rate it your worst? Okay, yeah. At the end of every video, we also have to rate our worst things that the other person has made us I'm watch. I'm trying to remember what was your worst. So far, my worst thing is Babes, Babes in Toyland. Toyland. This ain't nowhere near as bad as Babes in Toyland. Babes in Toyland is still the worst thing Rachel's ever made me watch. <laughs> because I, other than uh, what, uh, the villain, who I called the Purple Pie Man, <laughs> uh, in, in Babes in Toyland, he's played by the Scarecrow, you know, Wizard of Oz. He made the movie fun, but there was so much garbage to that. There's more than just one thing that's good in this. Like, Dick Van Dyke is good. The animation's good. The one song and dance sequence is really good. So there's more good in this than Babes in Toyland. But there's not enough good in this to make me remotely like this film. I would never watch this again if I don't ever have to. That's it. I got nothing else to say. Um, Rachel loves it. That's all that matters. Um, I got some ideas for uh, my choice. It's not going to be as bad as mm-hmm. Pro Wrestlers vs. Zombies. Good. But there's going to be some garbage. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, all that. Tell me in the comments below, probably the majority, how much of you people think I'm wrong 
not liking Mary Poppins, uh, take Rachel's side, Sherry or, Bobbins. you know, yeah, she, yeah, I would rather watch the Simpsons episode of Sherry Bobbins, 22 minutes of <laughs> hilarity, instead of two and a half hours of this. So, I don't know how else I'm going to end this, other than saying... Spoonful of sugar. Whatever. Cheers. <laughs>